Hey there. Oh, morning. What you got planned for the Elevate show today? Oh, we're telling the story of Isaiah from the Bible. Oh, interesting. What part of his story are you telling? Glad you asked. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Bible Minute. Minus 45 seconds. It's the Bible Minute. Minus 45 seconds. It's the Bible Minute. Minus 45 seconds. Well, prophets like Isaiah would tell people messages from God. Now here's the thing, God had a plan the whole time. However, things just kept going wrong because people kept disobeying God and that was a big problem. However, even though they were scared, Isaiah kept reminding the people of the things that God said were true. It's the Bible Minute, minus 45 seconds. It's the Bible Minute, minus 45 seconds. He had a plan and that someday he was gonna send a baby. Wow, that is a great story. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, and this baby was gonna be Jesus. And God told Isaiah this hundreds and hundreds of years before it actually ever happened. And it was incredible. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Elevate Show. I'm Dan, this is Sharia, and joining us as always is our house band, Manny and the Quins. That was some Bible minute minus 45 seconds. <laughs> so in it, we talked about the prophet Isaiah. I think we should start out by saying exactly what a prophet is. A prophet is someone who hears from God and tells people what he says. Thank you very much. So in the Bible times, God would tell things to prophets and then prophets would tell them to other people. Kind of like delivering letters for God. Yeah, kind of. We're going to talk a little bit more about what prophecy is in our next segment called Movie Styles. Afterwards, we're going to be joined by a fantastic guest, and then we're going to finish things off with a game called Trick or Truth. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back, everyone. Earlier, I told you the story of Isaiah. Well, kind of. There was um, a baby and a king. But God still had a plan, and so he told Isaiah that one day a baby was going to oh, be born. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of confusing. <laughs> and if you just read the book of Isaiah, you might find it kind of confusing, too. Prophets like Isaiah can be hard for us to understand today, but what they wrote about was still super important. And that's why it's time for Movie Styles. Today we're gonna to tell the story of Isaiah, but we're gonna tell it in an unusual movie style. Today's movie style is... a nature documentary. Here we go. All right, everyone. Here we see an example of the rare prophet in their natural habitat. This specimen is called Isaiah. He appears to be engaging in a common practice for prophets, praying. Oh, wow, Lord, that's quite the message. Okay, okay, I'll tell him. Whoa, here is fascinating behavior. He seems to be writing down God's message. Oh, here he comes. Let's follow this little guy and see where he goes. <coughs> the majestic prophet readies his call. Ahem! I have something to say. They appear to be having some kind of meeting. Look, I know that times are tough right now. Yeah, we keep being attacked. I don't think that God cares at all anymore. That's the thing. God does care. And I have a message from him right here, right now, that I'll read for you. <coughs> a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. The peace he brings will never end. The Lord's great love will make sure that this happens. Isaiah is one of the many prophets that God sent to his people. But this is a fantastic example of someone who told people what God said was true, 
even in one of the most inhospitable times in history. And that's the story. So, Shreya, what do you think about Shreya? Here, we have the elusive show host in his natural habitat. Okay. I think it's amazing how Isaiah kept on telling other people the things that God said were true. And now he's summarizing the nice story. Isn't that great? Even when times were tough, Isaiah kept on sharing God's good news with other people. And I think that we can do that today. And I think we can do that today. What incredible insight from this amazing creature. You know that I can hear you, right? <laughs> Okay, well, we are going to talk a whole lot more about how all that applies for us today, right when we come back. Gotcha! <laughs> what a beaut. Welcome back. Today we've been talking all about prophecy. And in the prophet Isaiah's story, he hears messages from God, which in turn, he then tells to God's people. But most of us don't hear God's voice out loud. So what are we supposed to learn from prophets like Isaiah? That's exactly what I want to ask our guest for this episode. Joining us today is a pastor and a friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Arda. <laughs> Good to see you. You're welcome. Dude, have hey, a seat. It's good to have you here. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm pumped. All right. Well, we are pumped to have you on the show. And you're here for a big episode, right? Because we're talking about a big book of the Bible called Isaiah. And you've read the whole thing. So what's it all about? Yeah, well, like you said, Isaiah wrote a long book. But it's really all about God's plan for his people and for the entire world. About how God was sending Jesus to save everyone from sin. Mm, so that would explain why we always read verses from Isaiah around Christmas time, right? Yeah. This must have been amazing for Isaiah to hear these messages from God. Do you think it was easy or hard for Isaiah to share those messages with other people? Hmm, probably a little bit of both. I mean, Isaiah really had to trust and believe in God to, you know, tell others about what God said was true, even when those people didn't believe him. Sure. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Uh, so Isaiah shared messages from God that were true, but we're not in Isaiah's day and age anymore. So what are some true things that God might like us to tell other people today? Yeah, let me give you three truths. One, God loves you. Two, God has a plan for you. And three, God wants you to follow him. These things are true about everyone that we meet. So awesome. Those things are true, and we can totally tell those things to other people. And I think that we can show God's love to other people by helping them, by being kind, by serving others, or maybe even inviting them to church. Yeah, those are really good ideas. And I think the big thing to remember is that we can share God's truth with others, just like Isaiah did. Well said. All right. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us for this part of the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, but you're not done yet. Okay. Because when we come back, we're going to play one of our favorite games called Trick or Truth. We'll see you in just a bit. Hey everyone, welcome back to the final part of our show where we're gonna play a game called Trick or Truth. Since today we've been talking about God's truth and sharing it with others, we thought it'd be great to bring back a game where we either get to tell the truth about something or maybe trick someone. In this game, each of us are going to take turns opening up a box and we can either tell the truth about what's inside or try and trick our friends and see if we can get them to guess something completely different. And we have to decide if our friend is telling us the truth or trying to trick us. Let's give it a try. All right, my friends, here I have our first object. So I'm going to look at it. Here we go. You ready for this? Oh, yeah. You think you're going to oh. get it? I am feeling optimistic, feeling Ooh, hopeful. Uh, right. All right. So in here, I have something very special. It's special to me um, because I have two pets and those pets enjoy playing with these kinds of objects. Mm. In this box, I have a mouse with a rattle inside. Okay. I mean, the whole backstory with the pets, mm -hmm. it was a bit convincing for me. Mm. You thought so? Yeah. 
What about you? I think I think she's tricking us. I don't think the object in there is that special, and I think she would have had a bigger reaction if she saw a mouse. I think she would have freaked out a little bit. Ooh, so I'm saying this is a trick. You know what? I'm gonna go with my gut. Truth. Okay. Trick and truth. <sighs> All right. You never seen one of those yarn mice? I would not have freaked out about that. However, Dan was right. Ah! Oh, yes! Googly eye! Ah! Trick! Okay. Ooh. See that? Ooh. I'm okay. I'm acting like I see it. Right. <laughs> In this box, we have a scene that looks like it's straight out of a fantasy story. Okay. Uh, there's woods, there's a dragon, there's a horse, and there are two characters. One that looks like a beggar, and the other that looks like a prince. And on both of their ring fingers is a golden ring. Oh my. That was quite the description. I mean... And it all came so quickly. Yes, the way that he said it so confidently makes me think that he was telling the truth, but... Which scares me. <laughs> it was also so odd that, it, does that exist? The right. thing that he just right. described to us? He was so confident, and I would like to think, in a game where you have to guess if someone's tricking you, that I could confidently say this. But I guess we'll find out. I think he's telling the truth. What do you think, Mark? I think he, I think he came prepared with that one. Okay. I think he's trying to trick us. All right, is it a trick? Or is the truth? I did come prepared because while this is a fantasy story that features trees and a dragon and a horse, there are three people here, none of whom look like beggars or a prince, nor do they have a golden ring. So Mark, you guessed it. So close to the yes. truth. Great job. I just caught up. All right, is this it? This is the final one. It's the final, final round. Let's go. Let's pop this open. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. My what goodness. I don't know. You stop. <sighs> wow. Peaking. Okay. There it is. I'm trying to see if we it. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna leave this open because I feel like this little guy needs to breathe. Okay, oh. because this is a little figurine of a dolphin that has a hoop around it. So it is jumping. It is a dolphin that is jumping through a hoop, a little figurine. It's made of not marble, but you know, kind of looks like marble. So I think marble would be too expensive. So, a little friend, we're gonna call him Phil. Phil the dolphin jumping through the hoop, figuring for someone's desk, maybe a girl's dresser, something like that. Oh man. <laughs> you know, that sounds like something I would own. Would you? He did oh, specify absolutely. a girl's dresser, and you oh. are a girl. I have a dresser. Yeah. I keep my clothes in it. That's where you should put your clothes, in a dresser. I want Phil to be real. I'm wanting it. <laughs> I'm super interested to see what's in that box because of how well that Mark told us all that. I think he's trying to challenge himself. And so I think he's gonna try and trick us. So I'm gonna vote trick. Dan, you are absolutely correct. It is not Phil the Dolphin, it is this. <gasps> That's I don't, where the what is, what is badger this? head what is... went. <laughs> <laughs> I see how you got the hoop idea and the pink. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh boy, yeah. that's terrifying. So, there we go. Well, <laughs> Phil we is not, I no longer like Phil. We, Phil is scary. That was fun. That was really fun. <laughs> oh man, it was so fun trying to trick each other, <laughs> right? But like Isaiah reminds us, we can share God's truth with others every day. Absolutely. And as always, if you have any questions for us or you want to share something you'd like to see on the show, you can write us a note in the mailbox at your campus or you can email us at kids at eaglebrookchurch.com. Speaking of letters through the mailbox, we've got a couple of questions that we want to answer for you right before we go. Uh, the first one, we've got several people who wanted to know, what is your favorite animal? Favorite land animal? Sea animal? Do you like foxes? What do you guys think? I do like foxes. I'd have to say, well, my favorite animal used to be a badger, but now I'm kind of scared of them. But I think I'll get over it. Yeah. Phil can be my friend. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice badger. Oh, good, good. Uh, 
Uh, foxes are orange, and so is my favorite animal, but my animal is a little different. I like tigers. <gasps> I like tigers too. Right? Yes. They're bouncy, 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 fun, 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 fun. And they're great. Oh, <laughs> nice. Crazy. Okay, <laughs> final question for the day. Uh, the people want to know, do you play a sport? Mm. Yeah, I love sports. Um, hockey is my favorite sport, and I like to play floor hockey with my family and friends every single week. Oh, fun. I used to play a lot of sports in school, like soccer, volleyball, baseball, but now I dance. So I've been dancing for a long time. That's awesome. I used to play a lot of sports in high school too. Soccer, basketball, track, that kind of thing. But right now, I really like playing this game that a lot of you probably play called spike ball. Ooh, I nice. was even in a tournament once. So, really? Yes, cool. it was fun. Yeah, that's it was awesome. 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 <laughs> cool, well hey, that's all we've got for you this week. But coming up next time, we're gonna be asking the question, why should I tell other people about Jesus? It's a big question and you're not gonna wanna miss the answer. We'll see you next time.